What's going on my fellow collectors? Jim here with another figure review. Tonight I'm very excited to be checking out the Mezco 112 Deathstroke. This is one that I've been wanting in the collection ever since I saw the promotional images. Very cool looking figure so I'm glad to have it in hand finally. Packaging is nice, you know, we get this cool image on the front here. You got Deathstroke, you got the 112 pose, play, display. Top you got the same thing, 112 pose, play, display. Bottom, the side. The box is like a really nice, you get a nice black on the front and then you get this really nice dark blue on the side. So that's very cool. Same thing on this side of the packaging. Then on the back we do have, you know, images of the figure, accessories, hands, and then some really nice shots of the figure down here at the bottom. And then of course this is a slip cover so you can slip that up like so to reveal the figure. But yeah, let's get everything taken out and take a closer look at Deathstroke. Okay, here's Deathstroke out of the packaging along with everything that we get with this awesome Mezco 112 figure. Really nice looking piece. Um, starting off with the base, we get our standard you know, circular base that we always see with Mezco. Very cool though, I love the logo on here. I love the dark, dark blue with the orange. Just looks really good. And like always, we do have the port you can either the bottom of the figure has a peg hole on each side onto that which is more or less what I do but if you want to have your death stroke in a dynamic pose you can pop that peg out and place in the, the arm which will swivel at the bottom hinge at the bottom hinges in the middle hinges at the top swivels at the top and then of course you do have the clamp and you can tighten all of these points on that so that is very cool, awesome base. You do get your standard Mezco 112 accessory bag, so that's always cool. And then he's loaded with a decent amount of stuff. You would think, you know, Mezco would go all out for this guy and just give him a bunch of different weapons, but we don't get too much with this Deathstroke. But the stuff that we do get looks great. Starting off, we do get this huge kind of assault rifle looking machine gun thing and it looks nice nice sculpted details like we normally get from Mezco we don't get too much paint on it but there's a little bit of dry brushing on it but, and we do get these kind of like orange lines to match the costume but I think overall it looks really cool uh, the clip does come out or the magazine in this case does slide out and you do get some painted bullets on top so that's always a nice little touch and pop that back in there so that's really cool. He does come with his sword, which I think looks fantastic. They did a really nice job on this sword. We get pretty sharp point on it as well. So uh, take note of that. But a really nice job on the blade. Just the sculpt of the blade looks great. The, the paint on the blade looks great. And then the handle is what's really impressive. It's got a really cool kind of crazy sculpt to it. Really nice job on that. It looks awesome. Of course, we do get a single uh, little pistol. Nice sculpt on this as well. Nice paint, a little bit of dry brushing here and there, a little bit of silver on top. This does have a removable clip. It does have a bullet painted on top. So there's a nice touches that I like. I like when Mezco does that. Uh, he does come with three sets of hands. You have the two fist, and then you have two, a set for like gripping and um, I really like the plates on the top of his hands and then we get some nice little details as well nice sculpting job and paint and then you get two more you get like a trigger finger hand and another trigger finger hand so very cool and he also comes with a separate kind of harness to go around him that will house the sword so that's really nice and it does stay in there. It doesn't just like fall out or anything. So that's cool. I do like that. And the, um, the, sh the wrap itself looks really good. We get a really nice kind of brown. We get a little bit of wash in there to kind of bring out some details. Nice sculpting on these little pouches here. Really cool. And it's just simply kind of pegged in the back. And at first I thought you couldn't move this, but you can technically move the sheath around. I don't know if you're supposed to though. So I, I, I Maybe you're not supposed to. I could just be, you know, kind of breaking that, but it does pop off here by a little peg. So then you can, you know, take this and 
wrap this around the figure. So that is very cool. Just peg it in place. And once it's on there, you know, it doesn't look too bad. And again, you can, you know, rotate this and you can mess around with this, bring it down. So it's not so high. It's kind of, it's a little bit tough to get it around him though, because he's so bulky, especially in the chest area with all the little armored pieces on there. But very cool that you can have that. And then of course you can, I think, rotate that around. So you can kind of have it straight up if you like that look or you can have it. So that's a nice little accessory. And then of course we do have the unmasked Slade Wilson head. You can pop that on there and I think this turned out really nice. I really like the look of it. I love how they gave him the white hair. The eye patch looks great. Skin tone's not bad. There's nice, you know, different different paints within the skin tone to kind of bring it out. Really nice job on the head sculpt. We like the shading we get here in the hair. Just looks really cool. So you have the great unmasked, oop, the great unmasked head sculpt, and then you have this awesome mass head sculpt. Look at that! Absolutely, just fantastic. How cool this helmet looks, and I love how we have the bare neck underneath this kind of, you know, big collar piece. You can just barely see it, but it looks great. But yeah, the mask turned out just phenomenal. I love the paint. I love the red paint that we have for the eye. Just the overall sculpt of it just looks nice and sharp. And then we have like kind of, you know, dry brushing to give it that kind of dirty, worn look all over. Just a really, really cool looking figure. Looks awesome. And of course we do have, you know, the cloth undersuit, which is kind of like a spandexy long black sh um, shirt. And then you kind of have these kind of, you know, just pants on him, which are nice. You get this kind of, you know, blue and then a darker blue on the side. And then everything else is just kind of like pieces that are pieced on him, but are on him. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can take any of this stuff off, but uh, you do kind of have this big, huge, you know, chest plate that wraps up around the neck and then of course comes around the back and then it connected all these straps here. But a really nice job on the paint and sculpt of these. And I love how we have all this silver you know, dry brushing and scratches and everything up in it. Just looks great. Really nice job on the texture here, all around these parts. The shoulder pads look awesome. Again, we get that really nice, you know, silver dry brushing to bring out all these little nicks and scars and everything. Looks great. This shoulder pad's a little bit different. It has like some grenades on it, but very cool. Again, we get really, really nice. The, the paint and weathering on this guy is just so sharp and clean, just looks great. His uh, gauntlets look really cool. Nice paint. Again, these are the fisted hands. You know, we get nice, you know, scratches. The silver scratches all throughout this figure just look great. Then we have his, uh, you know, belt, which is done nice. Get a little bit of wash in it, a little bit of black. Nice sculpted to all the pouches and everything. We kind of have like this under ad piece that's just gray with some nice kind of, again, with the silver, you know, scuffs and scratches. Very cool. We have this plate here on the back. And I love the, I love the blue and orange and black. It just looks, looks really, really nice. The pants are a little plain, but I mean, you know, the overall just look of the figure you know, kind of takes away from just being drawn to the pants because there's just all these other awesome, ar you know, armored pieces on him. He does have a gun holster, which is done nice. It's a little bit on the soft side, but you can pop that in there. It looks really good. And then you have his boots, which again, just look awesome with the orange and the blue. And then we get again with those you know, really cool looking silver scratches all throughout it. Then you have his boots. And these top like kind of parts to the boot are like on a on a joint of some sort. So you can kind of rotate them around a little bit. So that's cool. And of course the back here we just have, you know, straps. And then his boots look really good. Nice dry brushing on them to bring out the details of that. And we got some nice tread on the bottom. 
yeah man just a sick looking figure and um, as far as popping off the hands it's nice and easy the hands are a little bit on the soft side so popping on and off the hands or you know I haven't had too many issues with it he will hold both of his weapons where's his pistol at? I believe this was for his pistol he does have a nice you know uh, trigger finger hand and he will hold on to the weapons nice you can kind of you know bend the hand up out of the way the, the gun the pistol seems to be a little bit too big almost for his you know trigger finger hand I don't know why kind of have to like mess with it and get his finger there goes the, the clip you kind of have to like bend his finger and really mess with it to get it in there but he will hold on to the gun so that's nice and then there is another trigger finger hand but it was almost like it's a left hand like it's supposed to be you know using it for holding the other end of the rifle take the gun out of this hand again I mean for both guns you really have to kind of pry these hands so you might might want to do it without you know the hands connected first and then put the hands on I mean like I said the hands are nice and soft but it does take a little bit of work and he holds on to this gun much better than he did that or maybe because, maybe it's probably because I was just messing with it pulling it all apart so it was like nice and already you know broken up a little bit but that looks great so you can get him in some nice you know two-handed poses um, you can bring his arm up a little bit but I don't know if you're gonna be able to get him into some like you know looking down the sight kind of poses I guess you kind of can if you angle it right because I mean you don't really get yeah you can get a decent amount of movement so that's really cool but yeah so he will hold on to his two weapons nice take that hand off Where's that other gripping hand at? And of course we do have the gripping hand for the sword, which again is done with nice soft plastic. So you can just kind of, you know, pop that in there and it will hold on to his sword. Very nice. So that is awesome. I mean, overall, just a really, really awesome looking figure. I think Mezco did a great job with this guy. I'm gonna put these back, his fists back on him. Now, um, as far as articulation, we get some nice movement with them. There are parts that are hindered, of course, because we have these this bulky, you know, uh, armor plates on him. But we do get movement in the head and the neck. Even though, if you want to move the neck, you have to pop the head off to, you know, rotate that around. And it is a little bit stiff, but it will rotate a little bit. But uh, with the head, of course, you get you know nice rotation. Uh, you get up a decent amount down a decent amount. I mean, if you bury it in to this big collar piece, you get a little bit more. Uh, you get really nice side to side, so that's awesome. The arms do hinge up, but only about that much on that side. Get a little bit more on this side. I mean, these are these arm pieces are a little bit on the soft side, but I mean, you really are limited as far as that. As far as going up, it'll pretty much go straight up. He's got to work with this nice stretchy, you know, uh, material for his undershirt. Really nice back. You do have a bicep swivel in there. He does have double jointed elbows. So, I mean, it gives him a little bit better than 90 degrees at the elbow there. Uh, we do have movement in the upper torso. Um, not a lot of crunch. Not a lot of crunch at all. You get a little bit of back but not a lot forward, a little bit of side to side. So yeah, the waist is definitely um, hindered. And look, you can actually take all this off because I just noticed just by twisting them that there's a little peg right there that pegs into that armor. So you technically could take all of that off if you wanted to, but he would look, I think a little bit silly. Legs, you get really nice movement with the legs, no problems at all, nice stitching work all throughout it. Going forward, 
Uh, not so much. You could probably get more if you had that off uh, back a little bit. Thigh rotation. Double jointed knees, but you don't really get too much movement with that. Just a little bit better than 90. You do have rotation at the top of the boot. Uh, the feet, you know, you don't really get a lot of forward and back at all. Um, but you do get a little bit of side to side. So you get a little bit of an anchor rocker on him, but not a lot of movement going forward and back but it is nice that they gave us some some pivot you know it's actually better pivot than we see on a lot of mezco figures and i like how they have this plate as a kind of separate floating piece so it doesn't hinder it too much but yeah guys that is deathstroke man i think it's a really really awesome looking figure you know the movement yeah it's a little bit restricted because of all the bulky armor pieces that he has on but i mean overall it's a sharp looking piece he looks great, you know, with either head sculpt you put on him. Uh, getting a measurement. It looks like he is almost at like six and three quarter inches tall. A little bit under that. As far as some size comparison, bring this back. With some other Mezco 112 figures, here is the Deadpool. And here is the Red Skull. The modern Red Skull. So that's what he looks like up against a couple other Mezco figures. He's going to look good with your Mezco figures. Here he is next to the Marvel Legends Taskmaster. These two look cool together. Here's the Marvel Legends Cyclops. So you can see a little bit of size comparison there. As far as a couple other Marvel Legends, here he is with the Marvel Legends Bullseye and Marvel Legends uh, Cyclops. So that's just some size comparisons. But guys, at the end of the day, this is a really nice looking figure. Comes with some cool accessories. You know, the, uh, the Slade Wilson head, I think, turned out really nice. I think that's a really nice touch. But I also really dig the mask head as well, which is the details and everything they put into it. Overall, it looks really good. Nice, nice cross between cloth and plastic parts, you know. So, uh, yeah, once again, I'm very happy to own another awesome Mezco 112 figure, especially with it being this Deathstroke figure. But, yeah, guys, that was the review. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next figure review.